Alright. Hey. Yeah, I mean. Hey. Uh, please do remain calm. About to run against it and with a little bit of sour no times. Welcome to the Please Remain Calm podcast. I'm Ben Gonzalez. And I'm Daniel Gonzalez. And we're here in the studio with our guest. And we're very lucky to have her. I don't know how we got her. I don't know, man. You know she's, what I'm saying? She's tough like, to get. You know, the, the stars aligned. Yeah. Our our people, our producer <laughs> got a hold of her manager. Had to really pull some strings. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, sometimes somebody's in the airport for a few time, you know, for a few hours. We got her in here. We got her in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, our guest today is my uh, only sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, baby. My wife, uh, Bernadette Gonzalez. Hello, Hi, hello. welcome. Uh, so we, ha- we, we thought, we, we've actually been trying to coordinate this and get her in here f- for a while now because my wife, as we've talked about in the past, is a, is a PA, a physician's assistant. Yes. Physician assistant. Physician, physician assistant. assistant. And this, is, yeah, this isn't a situation where like, we couldn't get a guest <laughs> And we're like, hey, who's around? You know, what I mean, oh, Bernie, Last Bernie's resort. off. We'll, we'll bring her in. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. She. Uh. She keeps her. You know. Obviously, we have two kids too, and she's a professional. She has a career that that just started, and we're gonna, and and, and so we've been trying. It's an interesting story. Um. But also, it's a crazy journey from deciding that you want to go into this career to where she where she is now, and right. having sat back, you know, on on this end and just kind of watched that whole thing and gone through it with her. It really is a really cool story, and it's something that we thought our audience, you know, would benefit our audience. Just like we had those, the kids on talking about how to become a firefighter. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And plus, she's not just like some geek that was in the books the whole time. She was a EMT on an ambulance doing runs. I'm, you know street, I mean? I'm street smart and book smart. Exactly. Here, th- this is what we're talking about. Did, so, do we say her name? Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I don't know if we did. I thought yeah. we just Bernadette, said my wife. Bernie, we'll, we'll be Bernadette. calling her Bernie. Bernard. I'm, I might call her baby a couple times here and there. Just, you know, I know it's unprofessional, but it's force a habit. I thought you were saying it to me. <laughs> You'll know what I'm saying. That makes things a lot more comfortable in here. So we have a lot of ground to cover with you because I want to. I want to start off. I want to start way back, like way, way, way back at the beginning because, um, uh, because I, it's I've, relevant to my story. It's relevant to your story, and it's it's uh it's nice to hear stories like that when people come from an underserved, underprivileged area. Uh, of any city, really, the to, origins. Yeah, there. to rise up and 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 how you did that—it's right. inspiring to kids like that. Cue the so. stand and deliver music. <laughs> boom, 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 so boom. where did you grow up? Let's start I there. I grew up in East Los Angeles on Mednick and Hamill, right across the street from the projects. All right. Yeah. Which projects are those? Um. The Maravilla not, oh, that is Maravilla. Maravilla oh, yeah. Projects. Yeah. 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 It's a real yeah. deal, right? Yeah, there, it's dude. A projects as it gets out there. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I. I, you know, I didn't know I was living in that kind of an area as growing up. We had yeah. a nice house, everything I needed. It was cool. As you and three sisters, right? Yep. Mom I'm, and dad. I'm the third of four daughters. Did you guys ever have any issues with, with uh, you know, the gangs and the projects or anything like that? Uh, No, because my dad was born in that community and everybody knew Robert and everybody knew to respect him and... Oh, Those, yeah, oh, you're huh? Robert's daughters. Okay. Yeah. I just had to drop the Davila last name, and I was good to go. Wow. It's It's crazy how how there's that kind of respect in in the hood too. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, for like sure. Like even in like uh you know Oakwood, when we have friends in Oakwood, and they'd be like, oh, you kick it with such and such yeah. or whatever, and it's like, all right, he's cool, he's yeah. cool. Yeah. I don't have that anywhere. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, hey, who gives a shit? So, uh, just a normal <laughs> upbringing. Normal. You know, you normal. had a normal family, nice family, big family. Yep. Uh, spent a lot of time with. So actually, my dad's, uh, like I said, my dad was born in that com- into that community, and his sister and brother lived on the same block. Oh, so wow. I, so we grew up, but everyone was much older in my dad's family. So I grew up with my dad's family, and then I, I saw my mom's side a lot too. And she's, you know, I got like thirteen girl cousins on that side. So yeah, normal childhood. It's so funny. <clears throat> The similarities, man, like, you, you you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. you're married to someone for so long, you start realizing there's, like, little similarities yeah. between your life because our, you know, our, two of our... our, our you're a West our Sider, aunt. she's an East Sider. It's like the plot <laughs> of... Exactly, bring, bring it on part three. <laughs> exactly. It's West Side Story here, but... Man. Uh, but, like, you know, our aunt and uncle lived on the same street as our grandma, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. all, we had that corner with all our cousins and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just funny how that, yeah. that happened to both of us. But, so, normal family, you're going through school, normal elementary school and stuff like that. What was the first sign for you that you wanted to get into any kind of uh, medical field or anything like that? Was was that your first thought? Uh, no, never. I had no idea. Finished high school, had no idea. 
uh, I think it started. So my saint of a mother put me into the community, kind of like forced me to participate in a lot of community things. So uh, aside from sports, I was trying other things. And one of those things was a uh, fire department explorer. Oh, oh just, yeah. Yeah, she guy, took yeah. me. So I was uh, 14, 15. She took me over to the Montebello Fire Department. Oh, okay. Yeah, their main station and um, had them talk to me about the Explorer program. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yep, I want in. Well, look at you. Yeah. So I was a year or two too young to participate, mm -hmm. but I went back the next day ready, asked to talk to the person in charge and got myself in. Did your mom try that with all of you guys or just you? Like uh, she saw something in you. It, uh, I think it. it uh, I think it might have been something in me. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe my competitiveness. Yeah. Maybe she needs a rugged job. <laughs> yeah. You were playing sports before that. Um. Yeah. So, as you know, I played hardball for about three, four years, and then I dabbled in basketball, ice skating, um, diving. I was part of a diving team for a while. But Holy crap! But, uh, so there was a diving team in East LA. Yeah, East Los Angeles College. Damn, yeah, you know? they have a really nice pool. They have and it's a, like a youth diving. It was a youth program? diving group. Wow, yeah, yeah. never heard of. This. Do they have, <laughs> do they have like a, a like a cool name? No, I don't know. I didn't. You know, to be honest, I didn't. The I dolphins? didn't participate for that long. Yeah, it was, I just dove a couple times and I was out. A few dives. Do you a feel like <laughs> got my feet wet? <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like um, being involved in those competitive sports helped you in in this competitive field at all? Yeah, I mean, I was. I, I'm more social because of it. You yeah. Know? yeah. So you get into Explorers and we, we've talked all about the Explorers Explorer oh, yeah. program in the past, you mm -hmm. know, what that's all about and what, what a great outlet it is for kids to, you know, not have to be on the street and have something constructive uh, to do after school and, and stuff like that. So if you are interested in that at all, even for PD too, because PD has Explorer or Explorer Scouts also, it's really great for your kids. If you're around the age of 14, they usually start around there. Right. Yes, yeah, so I was. I was. I started to talk about that because you asked me when my first interact, like, sure, yeah, mm -hmm. medical field, right? So, as you guys know, wait, eighty percent of the calls are medical calls on the fire department. Oh, on yeah. the fire department, yeah. and yeah. I was running with Montebello Fire Department. I was, you know, um, riding along, you know, yeah, right. So, ride along to these medical calls, and now you hadn't you school. hadn't done EMT school or anything like that yet at this no, point. No, no, you were I was just a brand 14, new explorer. 15, yeah, yeah. Okay. Look at had, you. had just right. uh, I was signing things off the checklist. They all right, you 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 know you know the inventory on the squad. You can ride along with us now. So just like young yeah, man. Daniel, the yeah. similarities wow. they're striking. It's really get each other. Um, but but. Just to kind of break it down, like that program, same thing. So you come in, you start to learn, you learn tools and equipment, you learn about the way that they do things and stuff like I, that. I, you have a I've checklist of fire. things. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I have fought fire. Before. But there, you work your way up nice. to being able to ride along and fight fire and go go on calls with them and stuff like that. So you worked your way through that. Correct. Um, and then what happened after that? And then, I mean, I participated in that until I, uh, coming up to turning 18. That's when their program stopped at the time. Once you're 18, you're done. Right. So I kind of asked them, all right, well, what's next? What do I do, you know? I, I w you know, I was like firefighting, definitely not for me. It it was fun to do, but definitely not something I wanted to do yeah, right. in my for my life, you know. And so I was like, all right, so the paramedic side of it is cool. I enjoy mm -hmm. it. It's a good job. So what do I do next? And uh, all the guys there were super super helpful and supportive, and they were like, well, it's time to go to EMT school. Okay. So I, shortly after graduating high school, I went to Rio Hondo College, got my EMT done. And uh, and started working as an EMT. All right. Was EMT school a full time thing for you, or was it part time? Yeah, I did it in a semester. I did it full time, full time. All right. Um, and then so you graduate, you get your EMT. You, you obviously have to take a a, a state and a, a county accreditation <laughs> yeah. exam, right? First of many state licenses. I know. Did you ride along with Montebello again? Would I? Did you for your did for I? your EMT school? Uh, no, I didn't have to ride along with anyone at that time. Uh -huh. okay. yeah, yeah. So you get out of EMT school, you get all, all your licenses, and did you start working as an EMT I right away? I started working as an EMT with Care Ambulance, uh, running nine one one calls alongside LA County Fire Department. Back mainly. in your same neighborhood, right? I Rosie? mean, not too far from it. I was in Whittier. I mean, I did run calls depending on what shift I was working, but my uh -huh. shift was uh, Whittier. Okay. I, Uptown Whittier was my. But they they had East LA as an area also, right? Uh, LA at County. The time. LA County, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying care care service. Because okay, uh, let, let, yeah, let let's I'm explain this sure. too. 
L.A. County Fire Department has paramedic squads, but they don't have ambulances to transport patients. So right. they'll send paramedics and then also have a private ambulance company send an ambulance. Mm-hmm. L.A. County Fire Department's area they cover is so large Vast. that they don't have one ambulance company that covers everywhere. Right. So they break it up into regions and there's different ambulance companies. Different that cover private it. ambulance companies. Yeah, and these companies. private cover ambulances different like compete for a contract with county. Right. 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 So right. CARE had... A huge the Whittier area, oh, we had a East huge, LA, they have, yeah. and Orange County. They're huge. Right. They're they had like Santa Fe Springs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, how long did you work there at Care? I worked there before you met me. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say before I got saved. Uh, um, <laughs> I worked. I think a solid two years. And yeah. when you say you're working there, you're you're running calls alongside them. You're you're running alongside and working with paramedics on paramedic nine one one calls at this point, right? Yes. Okay. Um, seeing everything, the blood and guts, uh, the cardiac arrest, you're assisting with uh, with CPR, all that stuff. Everything you've seen. All the stuff that an EMT the, would the do. Mix. I'm just trying to get into like exactly what that, I mean, you, you, it, yeah, it's so, not hard to sign up and go to EMT school. You go you, you go through it, you know, it can be as difficult as, as you make it, but if you, st- you study, it's, it's the basic form of emergency care in the LA County system, basically, right? Yeah, basically. and then you have options where you can go to work and you can either choose like Bernie did to jump into a 911 system and do some real runs like that, or you can just, you know, be an ambulance guy that transports people, you know, from nursing like homes or hospitals. Yeah. Right, or you can get a job as in an emergency room as an ER tech, right. you know, never actually run 911 calls. So w- when you get that EMT, there's a lot of different avenues that you can take, you right. know? And deciding to go the route that you went with a 911 operator really exposed you to a lot of really life and death uh, scenarios, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. How long had you been there before we, we actually ran into I each other? Then we'll get into how we met. Maybe a year. A year? Maybe I had just started. I don't know. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I felt like I was in it, you know? <laughs> I yeah. was deep so in it. So say a year, and she worked there a couple of years. So you're... um. Basically, when you're working on an ambulance, man, you're you're transporting, depending on the calls that you get, or if you're on private ambulance, you might even pick up inter-facility transfers along with your 911 calls that are going around, but you transport to a bunch of different emergency rooms yeah. all throughout the day. Yeah. Um, at the time, I was working at Fire Station 9, which is uh, which at the time was a year removed from being the busiest fire station in the country. Right. And um, the way Fire Station 9 is situated and the type of area that Skid Row is all of those hospitals around Skid Row had catchment areas, meaning they only yeah. accepted patients from a specific, you know, geographic area around their hospital. And all their catchment areas ended at our district, which was nice, <laughs> right? Nobody wanted the bums. Yeah. And so I think they still um, do. Cal and uh, yeah, Sam, every, right? everybody yeah. butts up to mm-hmm. Nines District. So Nines was like that only area in downtown that didn't have a catchment hospital. So mm-hmm. we had to transport everything to LA County, County USC. Yeah. So that's all we transported there all the time, and we're talking about old, uh, old county. Oh, yeah. They've completely it, rebuilt an General entirely new hospital, hospital there, the haunted right? house, the Black Code, right? right. Black Code yep. County, Code Black. Code Black. And Black. I and I, on the other hand, never transported there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So this was a random yeah. act. I mean, it, I think it was our primary trauma, but I just. Yeah. It was. I wasn't always it, there. Yeah. And Definitely this was, as as the was the only time we ever ran into each other in the yeah. field too. Yeah, so. no, you live there. I was yeah. working. Um, I was working on rescue nine, rescue two and nine actually with uh, a guy that's now a battalion chief on the LAFD. We were working. We were paramedic partners that night, and ha- just happened to transport to LA County USC. There was a care ambulance there when we parked, and as we were taking our patient in, uh, Bernie was coming out with an empty gurney, and uh, kind of smiled at her, and you know we crossed paths, and I mentioned to my partner hey see that girl you know As and people do and uh <laughs> and you know we kind of giggled and and that was it we dropped our patient off came back outside and um and then uh bernie was sorry. so i'm sitting in my ambulance finishing up paperwork mm-hmm. i mean uh, so i had seen danny coming out you know and then i get back in the ambulance i'm doing some paperwork and I, that day i was in a mood and i told my partner how much you give me if i go hit on that firefighter that oh, i wow. saw coming out you know <laughs> And he he supported it. My partner supported <laughs> it. So I got out, walked over to the back of Danny's ambulance. He was cleaning up in the back. And I did the whole put my boot up on the yeah. chrome you guys been bumper busy and said, you guys been busy? <laughs> wow. Yeah. You fired off a cigarette. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking I to myself. I just had a haircut, too. So I'm thinking to myself, look fresh. at this girl, you know. Dan's wiping down blood. Because <laughs> I was 27 at the time. You were 19. I was 19, yeah. yeah. 
Wow. So came, uh, came right out and admitted that in the open airwaves. Yeah, we ch- we uh, chatted for a little bit back there, and then I had to go back inside inside the ER. Went back in and uh, came back. Sorry, out. they got a code right now. I, I'm needed <laughs> back back in the ER. She, uh, I, I go back in. I come back out. I don't see her. I'm like, oh, okay, well, oh well. And see, we remember the story differently. I don't remember that part. Anyway, so I, you forgot I, go, you were I go get I go get back in the driver's seat of the of the rescue. I'm sitting there, and the way county was, if 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 I'm sitting straight ahead, if I look in the side view mirror, you can see all the uh, backboards that people, you know, Sounds when they like bring. He remembers way more than you. When they bring in, uh, when you bring in a trauma. Wait, case, but did this happen before or after the nurse? This is the end. Oh, I was so, gonna, you're, so you're skipping the I'm whole skipping part. I'm skipping the nurse thing. No, I'm not. I'm not skipping. Okay. I'm never skipping. We're talking in the back of the rescue. Let me go back then. We're talking in the back of the rescue, and we're having a conversation. This nurse comes out of the mm. ER and completely butts into our conversation, and she's like, "Hey, would you mind if we could? Could you guys give me a ride to my car at the parking lot over here?" But, whatever. but she like interrupts as I'm having a conversation. Yeah. With him. I'm trying to pick up on yeah. him, and she just jumps into the back of his ambulance. So I get a little like. All right, bye. You know, yeah. I take off, go sit down again. Sad, my butt hit the scene. I was like, no, bro, it's not gonna go down like that. <laughs> so I stood up and went back out, and, and I kind of like, felt the same way. And, and that's I told, when I dropped the line. Well, I told the chick, no, 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 you are remembering it wrong. And I told that chick, hey, I got to go back into the thing, so I don't know how long we're gonna be. And she mm-hmm. took off to go walk to her car, and I mm-hmm. went back in to see what my partner was doing. Mm-hmm. I came back out, got in the front seat in the in the driver's seat because I didn't see her. And if you're sitting in the driver's seat, if you look in the rear in the side view mirror here, you can see all the backboards that yeah. people, if people bring a trauma patient, right. in, they pull the patient off the trauma. If it's covered in blood and stuff, they stack all the backboards there. And our backboards have the fire department phone number right. on it. So I'm sitting there and then I see her walk past in the mirror and I'm watching, I go, oh, there's that girl, you know? And then she stops and she goes, hey, if I call this number on these backboards, will I get you? And run, <laughs> and runs away back to her back wow. to her rig, right? <laughs> and I'm like giggling. I'm like, look at this girl. You know, I go, hey, let me go talk to her. So I go over mm-hmm. there and you know, hang in her door and we exchange numbers. Then you gotta then you gotta run that there's an assault. Texted each other <laughs> yeah, yeah. Immediately. It was beautiful. Never and never never ran into each other again. I mean, by accident. Um, on by design we did a few times after that, but never by accident. It was just a complete chance meeting. Yeah. It blossomed from th- from there. But cut to, you know, months six months down the line yeah at the time you were also going to college right you were at east la college was yeah i was taking like uh yeah east, no i was at a what uh, yeah whatever i was at a community college taking classes but working full-time and the shifts working as an emt are rough sometimes overnight you're just chilling in the ambulance all night and waiting for a call and getting paid an emt Sure. Check, yeah. You know? yeah. So it wasn't easy. Hard All time. things that suck. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so we our relationship blossomed and and uh, got to the point where we were talking about you know uh, we're staying in each other or she's staying at the house you know pretty often we're talking about moving in together and then the discussion came you know what exactly she wanted to do and in that time she had mentioned that she wanted to be a PA. Yeah. How so, did you come to even yeah. realize what that job was or that you wanted to go that route? I met a PA at a hospital transporting mm-hmm. to PIH in Whittier. Mm-hmm. Um, my partner at the time, who's now our son's godfather, introduced me to someone he knew that worked there, and he was a PA, and I was like, a PA, what's that? He kind of broke it down for me, gave me a little quip, quick explanation. It's and trippy then I once was you like, hear oh, what it is. Like, wow. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I was like, shit, that sounds real cool. So let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. What okay. what exactly did he tell you? How did he describe it to you? Or uh, how would you I describe don't, the I don't job? Remember. Yeah, I'll describe it yeah. to you in my words because I don't remember. But he said, um, so a physician assistant is a mid-level provider. So mm-hmm. as a physician assistant, you can see your own patients. You take a history, do a full exam, order labs, order imaging, come up with a diagnosis, treat your patient. You can write prescriptions. Um, some PAs do surgery, some PAs do anything, you yeah. know, there's Stitches. a PA, there's a PA in every, in every field of medicine. Pretty much. And when yeah. we're saying provider, you mean just a person that gives care, a healthcare yeah. provider. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so above any nursing level, slightly below above. what a doctor can do. Correct. Right. Well, not below what a doctor can do. Mm-hmm. Cause Clear it up, like yeah. I said, I mean, School a, a me, PA, a PA can do heart surgery, can do, you know. Uh, essentially, a PA can do whatever the doctor does so, that supervising so, so her work, right? So here's the thing right, about a physician work. assistant okay. is that you are able to provide this care 
mm-hmm. under the license of, the of a physician, uh-huh. a medical doctor. You're um, almost like yeah. an extension of right. of that doctor and his right. specialty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If that's what so, you want to go So into. what you do is you find a supervising physician. So if you're gonna right. if you want to work in pediatrics, you find a pediatric doctor if you want or you can work for a whole group like mm-hmm. I do for a hospital and uh, Yeah. And, and then and say, then you have a supervising physician. So by supervising, I don't. It doesn't mean that you. They have to be right next to you as you're providing the care. Right. They don't but even have to be in the same building. Their license right, right, for right, the right, most right. part. So yeah, supervising very little supervision yeah. if you're if you're good at your job. And, and it's the the same mm-hmm. legal principle that uh, Danny works under, because technically there's a medical director for LAFD. Yeah. All the paramedics are working under his license so when danny has to do any kind of doctor shit intubation something like that it's technically under that doctor's license kind of in the same vein correct yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. um but but pas yeah they're trusted to do pretty much all the procedures like like danny was saying like you were saying they're they're in on they're in surgery they're in the or um i know with uh my job there's certain specialties where we have pas screen the cases Mm. and screen the transfers so instead of where like for a trauma or something we would talk to the trauma surgeon yeah. for neurosurgery like at harbor we talk to a pa mm. and we present the case to the pa for uh cardiothoracic surgery at usc we presented all all, all the cases to a pa yeah or, it's, no, it's, no a nurse practitioner, pra- it's, uh, practitioner it's actually. all around a great career yeah yeah um like if you go into most clinics yeah. You know, it's a it's it's a PA that you're yeah. seeing or even like dad Every when he goes ER. to uh, with, with Kaiser or something like that and goes to like one of the Kaiser clinics, get a checkup or or stuff like that. He's seen a PA most of the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so. So. Um, so you're taking the one class, you know, at uh, I'm taking the, I'm taking like little classes here and there, wherever I can fit them in. And then are you already at that point thinking um of what major you're going for and stuff like that? Like, did you already decide a path yeah, that you're yes, gonna travel for your yes. course of study? Because, um, I mean, for PA school, to get into a PA program, mm-hmm. you have to have um, some prerequisites done, and most of them, understandably, are in the sciences. Right. So I knew I was gonna get a, d- a bachelor's degree in the science so that my classes would line up, you know? So not right. only was I getting my bachelor's degree, but I was fulfilling the prerequisites for PA school. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you started out at a junior college or community college. I started out, yeah. How far did community college take you before you were able to? It took me really far. Um, I paid, what was it, $60 a unit for a class and mm-hmm. got as high as like calculus one, physics one, you know. And yeah. then before I um, Knocked before all those... I transferred, yeah, so I, I debt free did as much as I could, transferred to Cal State LA nice. for the classes that I couldn't do in a community college. And even at Cal State LA was paying $2,000 a semester, came out of there with my bachelor's degree debt-free. And um, yeah. And you were working the whole time at CARE? No, no so, right. so, so shortly after meeting Danny, he was talking about how we were talking about moving in together. Uh-huh. Um, he hit me with the, why don't you quit working and hit school full-time? Because that's ultimately what's going to, benefit us you know the quicker you get to your career yeah so i brought it to my mom my mom was like yeah that's why you jumped in with that know how fast like whoa there was support (laughs) (laughs) there's a lot of support. Um, i mean yeah no man we we uh we made a decision as we we knew we were gonna be together and stay together at least i felt that way strongly and uh you know, made a conscious decision to to support her best career. Best decision of his life. Best, hey, seriously, man, <laughs> best investment mm-hmm. I ever made um, in anything or anyone. But um, the long game. But yeah, mm-hmm. that that really just kind of turned everything up. I think. Um, uh, I think for both of us, it was kind of like, all right, shit, we made this decision. She's committing to fully. It to helped fully you know that school. he was serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just, like, it just seemed like everything got, <laughs> got kicked into gear a little bit more. Everything became a little bit more serious, and the goal uh, became a little bit more clear. Yeah, you know? so then I started going to school full-time, full-time hitting school, and then um, did that for about seven, eight years. Yeah, and mm-hmm. in there in the we meantime, had two kids. Yeah. You know, Things changed, um, got married, had two kids. Yeah, the old was, county closed, was, new <laughs> county open. <laughs> I was seven, eight months pregnant. Um, taking physics and calculus and newborn with those classes is it's pretty impressive to watch, man. 
you know i mean i say in, gen- sure. in general in general watching this you know movies your wife, right in itself in general watching your wife go through you know being pregnant that whole thing and in, in general is pretty fucking amazing yeah. to watch you know and and it gives you a whole new respect for someone to put to to know what she was doing on the side and and putting herself through in school and getting straight fucking a's you know what i mean yeah. and being oh, yeah. pregnant and having like, kids on top of Danny's that Danny's paying yeah. for this all i'm gonna not and putting up with you part. yeah man it, um yeah. <laughs> <You're right>. um <laughs> just impressive so so um got through junior college took you as far as it could you transferred over to cal state la you wound up getting your bachelor's in biology biology magna cum laude magna cum laude top top of the class um (laughs) and that took (laughs) you what two two years at cal state la i I, I, yeah it it happened quick because i had spent so much time at community college um and while all this is going on too, mm-hmm. you're you were also doing all the prerequisite stuff for PA school though too, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the so, volunteerism. So like I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the classes lined up with my degree and the prerequisites for PA school. Aside from that, you have to have paid and unpaid healthcare experience to to be able to apply uh, to PA school. So I was so aside from being home with the boys um taking these classes, I was a volunteer at um LAC USC. So uh, county's volunteer program in the emergency room i in the new oh, hospital right they had built a completely yeah. new hospital at this point that's yeah the main right hospital the see right now yeah yeah and then i was over in venice at one a family clinic there spending some time i did the a venice lot family stuff. clinic yeah yep. yeah big important popular yeah long long standing clinic there all our friends that got pregnant in high school <laughs> 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 everybody knows somebody had to go Venice family clinic <laughs> like, oh, is damn. what we're saying so now it gets a little trickier though as far as the schooling and navigating where to go because you had junior college you know Cal State system but for PA schools the yeah. options dwindle right aren't there only like a few PA schools that one can so, go so, to so they they so at this time what what let's say 10 years ago mm-hmm. yes dwindle they mm-hmm. were, there were few, not a lot of people knew about the profession. Every time I told somebody what my plan was, they were like, what, what's that? Right. I have to explain it. Up until a few years ago, you still kind of had to explain it. Now the profession is huge. You know, they got ranked number one in U.S. World News. Oh, jobs oh, to get. Have jobs to get, yeah. careers, yeah. overall, cons- considering everything. Nice. Anyhow, wh- um, what were we talking about? What was the question? Oh, like how how hard is it to find a PA school? Oh, yeah. Because I remember so, there only so being like a few before. Har- so, yeah. yeah. So, there were what a handful in the U.S. at the time. Now, mm-hmm. it's that's not the case. They're okay. popping up everywhere. There's more like than 230. It's kind of kind of like oh, per- okay. kind of like paramedic yeah. school. Because I remember, yeah, for L.A., it was like you had to get into USC or, or uh, Western. Western, Western right. yeah, or Stanford or something if you couldn't get into one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. what's one of MLK? Did MLK have a? Oh, yeah, Charles, oh, Charles Drew. Drew. But right. they got shut down for a while. They All weren't right. meeting standards. They got shut down. Yeah. So, so yeah. But it, my options were definitely a lot less. It was either USC or USC or USC <laughs> or <laughs> Western or Pre- Drive Pretty much, man. Right. This, we own the home in Inglewood. We have the boys. Danny's got his career that's paying for everything, so I mm-hmm. can't take off. Right. So I had to bust my ass to meet the standards of USC and Not, just and yeah. just in general you know grow, growing up me and for those of you that don't know my dad was a UC, huge UCLA fan you know uh, season tickets mm-hmm. UCLA base uh, basketball mm-hmm. football, football yeah. you know we go all baseball games I played mm-hmm. in the high school all-star game at UCLA stadium I mean, it's like UCLA 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 oh, yeah. and then Bernie was a full-blown mm-hmm. SC fan when I met her right yeah. and so we always had that you know kind of going back and forth about USC UCLA but there was no doubt in her or my mind that sh- that was the direction she wanted to go. And all of the all of the uh, volunteerism and everything that she was doing was based off of the prerequisites to get into, to get into USC. USC. I knew what USC liked and I knew that's where I was. Where uh, everything I was. was you had important. your eyes on the yeah. prize. Yeah. You were so focused. that's why I volunteered at L.A. County. Right. That's why I chose Venice Family Clinic. Because, yeah. you know, it's they, they're these names that you can drop that, you know, show that you're. you're okay. and, and ultimately, man, when you're looking at these different schools and not to. Uh, degrade any of the other schools because I'm sure they're fine institutions but when you're talking about coming out of coming out of PA school and actually having a network of people uh, that you can pull from to you know get recommendations for jobs for for anything any avenue that you want to go to um, coming from Keck uh, School of Medicine and USC PA program is kind of head and shoulders above the rest 
so it was a good goal to to and being able to rub it in your dad's face is kind of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of cool. exactly <laughs> that has been fun to watch that's yeah. been fun i mean basically watch. everybody's been going to usc nobody has gone to UC. yeah it's true man yeah, yeah our cousin yeah man it's yeah. funny but um but yeah so she geared everything toward that so then when it came time to actually get in to get interviews okay what happened so i had to apply twice um, the first time I applied, to and you have to apply to get to even get an interview, right? I mean, you have to apply, and they have to review. Right, it you and have say, to fill out this. Um, there's like a one system for all the schools. There's one application portal for all these schools. Did you get bumped out by uh, Lori Laughlin's daughter? <laughs> Probably. No. Um. No, I just didn't. Uh. So here's what I think happened. I think I miscategorized all my hours as an EMT when I was filling out the application. And so on the other side of it, it looked like I had no paid healthcare experience. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. I think I screwed myself up there. Definitely screwed myself up Just there. Just a clerical error? Yeah, and you know, you have to write this whole personal statement to get in. So you have to fill out this application. You have to f upload all your transcripts from every class you ever took. You have to explain any gap years, mm -hmm. you know, which I had eight gap years. Yeah, right. You know, I had to explain that I was hitting school full time, volunteering like yeah, crazy, yeah. learning the system mm -hmm. before I actually, you know, to be right. sure that's what I wanted to do. In the meantime, raising a family. Right. Um, so you have to explain your gap year, what they call a gap year. And then um, you have to write a personal statement, which is where you like really where the meat is of the application. You have to reflect and talk about why it is you want to be a PA and you know why not Man. an MD, why not a nurse. So you go just all of that, and then you find out that Dr. Then, Dre just <laughs> bought, bought a building and his daughter is in yeah. film school. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? so just so I'm clear, you you there's one system where you put all of that information into, and then you and apply to the separate schools, and they pluck your info from that system so you yeah they pluck your info from that system and then a school like usc has an additional what they call a supplement application gotcha. so you have to do the caspa application which is the portal to every single pa school that participates okay. in that uh -huh. and then uh, and then you have to do a supplemental application with usc so you you do all the caspa you apply to the different schools and were you shocked when you didn't hear back from sc and only heard back did you only it was was it only western you heard back i think from? i heard back from western had an interview um with them didn't i think i got wait listed with them and then i just never got an interview for usc the first time and i was like just just not gonna fly i was sticking to my plan so i went and did more volunteer work i think that's when i you know realized re what had happened i was like all right let's, uh, let's do it so you read so it the I, app. I, I, uh, yeah, I started volunteering more places. I rewrote my personal statement when I really like self-reflected and really kind of like things I don't want to visit from my past revisited and kind of really was able to explain why why I was ready to be. And that, and that was one of the cool things about SC because you wound up getting accepted to Western. Right. And we paid. We put the down payment we put a, for them. We paid a deposit for, for Western. Yeah. And it was like a, we already had like a start date and all this, all like the information was done deal. She was in at Western. And then. I got the call from USC. Get the call from, she calls me and she's like, SC called me for an interview. And we're like done, man. I have a couple grand into Western already as a yeah, positive right? stuff. And I'm like, okay, hold on. Not to mention the fact that SC was about six months longer mm -hmm. and way more expensive. Right? right. Way more expensive. Way more expensive. I'm so, sure, yeah. so the conversation quickly went from like, Okay, hold on. Time out. I know you really want to go to SC, but let's think about mm -hmm. this here. <laughs> you, it, He's always trying to talk me. I think. Well, six. I just want to. I like to look at things from all <laughs> angles. Yeah. Six months longer, right? So that's six months you could be out in the field working, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, fifty grand more expensive or whatever it was. So we're it's, we're not just talking about a fifty dollar, a fifty grand, a fifty thousand dollar difference. Yeah. We're talking about that about plus like the a, money a you can make yeah. in yeah. six months. You know. Yeah. So potentially a eighty, ninety thousand dollar swing. Yeah. Like, is that what you really want to do? Boat. I give yep. all this explanation, like just to give a second. She goes, "Yep, yep I want to go to SC." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, hey, yeah. let's go. You know, it's part of my legacy. And then so yeah, she 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 got a call for the interview, had her interview, went through, nailed had it. Had my interview, loved it, got the call, got in, started. Um. So you're starting Keck School of Medicine, Keck right? Keck School of Medicine, their physician WM assistant program, Keck Foundation, which also is a 
so yeah so you come out ready to take your boards your license to become to practice as a physician assistant mm -hmm. and you also earn your master's degree so i have a master's right degree from usc on Whoops. master mm -hmm. um uh, so, but the, the point I was gonna make. Hold on one second. Sorry, hit it, I hit forgot it. it. Sorry. The point yeah. I was gonna make was that was a cool thing about SC. Like we 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 had all the Western things set up, but then SC came out, and it was really like a kind of realizing that her rewriting and like getting more personal where she came from, why she wanted to do it. It was like the reasons behind why she wanted to do the career were important to SC. You know yeah. what I mean? It wasn't like they just want to take in anybody because this is how much it costs and this is how much they're going to make by putting this school through school. They wanted to take me in because school. I grew up in an under underserved community. Yeah. Because I spoke Spanish. Yeah. Because I was a first generation yeah, college yeah. student. Nailed that app. They're, and, and that, they're a diverse. And that's you know, they, and that seemed cool. I think to both of us was like, all right, they want people that really care about this job as a whole. First of all, helping people and doing this job, but also people that are going to go back and serve their underserved yes. communities, you know what I mean? And so just having that as one of their motivators for who they're picking to, to be in their school was pretty, was pretty cool. And we thought that it was is cool. cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and they also had a Spanish aspect to, to class also, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like a medical yeah. Spanish yeah, yeah, yeah. They, um, they that, that they didn't Spanish. offer in the other schools. So it was a good choice overall. Very nice. Good. I'm happy with it. Did that help your medical Spanish? Not at so all. <laughs> My my, uh, I'm like at the can limit. You, like, of my just medical fly Spanish over now. him in medical Spanish now. Oh, she's fluent. Any, any, oh, wait, you can speak yeah. Spanish anyways. Spanish, yeah, that's right. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Um, how so? How how long is uh PA school? So PA school there? at USC was 33 months. And it kind of just takes you. And yeah, so the so the first uh, year is what they call didactic. So mm -hmm. you're in classroom getting tested every week, sort of like EMT school. You know, learn something, take a test on it, move on. Type and thing. this is at the this hospital at, campus, right? No, this is in Alhambra. Uh, so that's a, yeah, this is in Alhambra. We have uh, the PA program has their own their own building, their own campus. At wow. Alhambra. Yeah. So you go there every day. It's uh, not. I mean, you're there nine to five, but you're studying twenty four seven. Yeah. Right. For the first year, taking tests. Um. Yeah, getting to know your colleagues and you know, studying together and stuff. And then the second year or the second part of PA school is clinical. So you do rotations. Mm -hmm. You do um, rotations through pediatrics, emergency medicine, um, orthopedics, you know, every family and medicine. OB, yeah. Family and, medicine. and everybody gets a different experience. Everybody goes to a different spot for surgery. Six weeks. Yeah. So is so that county and at Keck and the clinics or where do you so go? Not limited to. So yeah, All I did. I did um what I I did general surgery and I did orthopedics at County USC. Oh, okay. So what was that like? God, it was awesome. Yeah, general surgery. I I I mean like I so I had been to Old County. So uh -huh. I I first went to Old County as an explorer. Uh huh. We had this call where. I forget <clears throat> someone got beat up at a mall or something. We took them as a trauma to county. Mm -hmm. And I walked in there and I saw those round curtains in the middle. And I was like, what is that? And yeah. one of the paramedics. The sea booth. Yeah, yeah. sea yeah. booth. One of the medics pulled up a box for me and was like, go ahead, take a look. I looked just in time to see some dude's chest getting cracked open and then massaging yeah. his heart. Yeah. And I was like, this is where I want to be. Yeah, that's wild. Like, like, this is where I want. This, I need to come back to county, you know? So- which was another reason why USC was where it was at for me. Cause I was like, if I'm going to, you know, if I'm going to be a PA, I'm going to be part of USC and I'm going to get back into USC yeah. County. You know? So then, uh, so then, yeah. So I did some rotations there at County and it was awesome. I mean, I saw everything, everything, everything. Yeah. Everything. But, uh, you know, people from her class, I mean, wound up in Chicago and wound up in different parts of the Hawaii, country. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so oh, really? You can get, you yeah. can get it's almost like there. residencies. You know, yeah, for doctors, yeah, kind of the same thing. You're getting yeah. out and you're, yeah. you can put in Except for, you can get assigned to anywhere. Condensed. Yeah, so you do six weeks in that. And then another perk about USC was you get to choose a senior rotation, which is why the program is a little bit longer. Okay. So I chose to go back to emergency medicine. Oh, okay. And um, so I had a senior rotation in emergency medicine and ultimately was offered a job where I did both my core and my senior rotation of emergency medicine. And, oh, nice. and, and and initially that job was offered right essentially before the covid like completely blew up what well, I, right. I think my i think i got offered the job because covid 
Yeah, they needed. They needed more, more staff. Yeah. yeah. So they took on me, who was the most recent. Well, originally though, we thought you had the job, and then they froze all the hiring oh, right, right, because right, of COVID. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. They froze. They, she had the job lined up, and then everything got all the hiring <laughs> got frozen because because of COVID. Right. Initially, when it was first kind of popping off. And um, we, we, you know, everyone wasn't sure exactly how to deal with it yet. The hospitals were still kind of scrambling to figure out exactly what they were dealing with and how they were going to contain it and stuff like that. They froze all the hiring. Right. And so then it was like, okay, here we are at the end of this long, long road um, that she's battled through and, you know, straight A's and gotten through and the best school she could get to and all this stuff. Hit this. And we hit, you know, where it's supposed to be this world opening up the number one profession in the country and it's most desirable. And that all shuts you down. You can't find you know, can't, couldn't find a job right off the bat. That's right. I did apply to some places, some callbacks, but nothing solid. And then it was just like, you know, hey, should I take this job in this specialty that I didn't even want anything to do? And I was like, man, just yeah, let's just, just to be wait. able to have a job. Yeah, I go, yeah. but let's just wait. I'm talking you about know, urology. Yeah, urology. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, do I really she got there. We talked about that before. She got offered that day. job at the urology office. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you know, something to consider. Yeah, they Dealing. pay very well. I believe it. You get paid a lot. Deal with weenies all day. I believe it. And uh, <laughs> it's real emergencies. But dude. no, she. You know, she, we we're like, oh, let's hold off and make sure you're doing something that you want to do. After all this effort that you put, it, it wouldn't make sense to commit to something that you don't even really truly want to be doing. You know, so right. A few months pass, and then got a I phone mean, call. Yeah. I got a phone call, offering me the job. Nice. Yeah. So I. Said, so you're working in an emergency department I work in an emergency room yeah at what what type of hospital is it like what what level of care do they give it's a trauma trauma hospital the main trauma hospital County. in LA County yeah um world renowned so take us through a typical day right now so now you've graduated <laughs> PA school you're working school. in an emergency department the boys are 10 and 8 and now boys so are in the their belly own thing. of the beast covid has hit yeah so, Give us so, a scene here. So yeah, let's so, let's do that. So New I Bernie start, is so, starting in. Bright so eyed. So I start working. I start working at this emergency room with, I mean, the only training I had was when I was there as a student, mm -hmm. and that experience was way different than having to actually do the job, get in, like, putting yeah. in the orders for things, and right? Actually prescribing somebody, yeah, some crazy with ass medication that could in. do them harm. Yeah, yeah. So I get no, I get no training. I just they I just get all right. Here's what here's your start date. I show up and I'm just like all right, man. Work. So then, work. This is work. Yeah, sink or swim at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they knew you from your rotations and before. They just some rotation. some people some people did. Yeah. But they figured. But like, I'm you showing have up with a mask now. System. Yeah. No one knows how pretty I am because I have to wear this mask all day all right. so from from my first day. Yeah. Well, not even <laughs> just the mask. Yeah. What's the whole getup that you have to wear? Scrubs, I wear scrubs. Yeah, scrubs and what scrubs, else? Like you clogs. have to have like a shield. So if I if I thing. work if I work in the COVID section or any section mm -hmm. where where so in triage they do really well at if this could be COVID at all, then you go to this side of the emergency room. Okay. If there's no way it can be COVID, you go to this side. So if if I'm on if I'm working on the side where it could be, then I everything cap surgical cap stoggles which are cool goggles mask n95 scrubs can we go back to the cool goggles, goggles? they're called they're just stoggles. like this man. They, they got they they're got called covers stoggles on the side and they have different colors like, like terminator glasses cute. like the ones grandpa used to wear over his glasses no they're not that big like that there's oh, okay. like regular glasses like this except they got they have like side they got side, like side things in it they're good. all right look yeah, them up folks cool. stoggles yeah it's a yeah, it's like a startup company too. So yeah. do we're that. looking for sponsors, Douglas. <laughs> All right, yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you have a reach. Um, yeah, basically the the full boat, you know, gown, right? Gown, gloves, oh, double yeah. glove, when, all that stuff. When you're going protected. into the room, yeah. And everybody's still inside in the ER. There, or have you guys like expanded to one of the parking lots, tents? Uh, that, we do that, have that a couple situation? tents set up. Yeah, so if you're if you're like the PA on the two to ten shift, you're working the COVID tent. You're running the COVID ah. tent. Yeah. So then, um, I, I mean, I do that. But, but uh, numbers are down now, though. Numbers are way using, down now. We're not using yeah. the tents anymore. They're when there, but they're not there. it was up, because your hospital is a humongous hospital, um, mm -hmm. did it fill up, or were you guys in a uh, hallway situation? It or filled up. Were you guys holding a bunch of admits in the ER? Yes. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Like, Lots like, of like double, triple what you normally were? Triple. Yeah. What we, I mean, I, I started COVID. But mm -hmm. I mean, I would I would ask, you know, how crazy is yeah. this? She got dropped right into the fire, man. That's like, what I right, mean. Right you right started at, at, at triple 
capacity yeah. time uh, uh, like madness didn't right? even have anything really to compare it to right. that's you know? what i'm yeah, saying yeah. this is your well, baseline I mean, I, i'm not a i i, I can come i've been in as far as working there yeah. Before, yeah. but yeah having yeah. to do the job oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah okay. but um uh not only i mean busy in that you have to work a lot harder and figure things out a lot faster but also like working with the nurses and the doctors who are being stretched too thin and yeah you know like I'm, these are my coworkers now, and I right. don't really know who you are because I've only ever met you under, under extreme, extreme stress, stress where yeah. you're being a dick, you know? Yeah. 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 So that's settling down now, and I'm starting to, you know, people are... Uh, Build real relationships yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it was obviously rougher than it had to be beginning. Now it's starting to settle down, now it's stabilize, to settle down. and you're seeing, like, your relationships with people that you work with even start to change because their personality can come out a little bit more yeah. now because you're not on the Titanic. Correct. Ah. I can't wait to be able to see them smile. So what is a <laughs> uh, what is a typical a day trip. like these days? Okay, so as an emergency room physician assistant, I work be- I work like 15 shifts a month. Okay. Which shifts. is why your shifts I mean, an 8-hour 8-hour 10-hour 8-hour shifts where I work. Okay. Yeah, some some are twelve, depending in different emergency rooms. But so I work eight hour day. shifts. Um, so I mean, I'll I went back to work. What I work, so I worked three days before that. I hadn't been to work in six days. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's right. it comes I in little bunches. It. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So I work eight hour shifts. I I mean, I show up, log on to the computer, pick up a chart, pick up a patient, see them on my own, um, go back to the computer note everything down, put in any labs, putting any images that I want, you know, and as they you start, put the orders in, too? I put the orders in as soon as all the results start trickling in. I, you know, at, at that point, I already think, OK, this is what that person has and this is what's going to end up happening. But as everything starts coming in and I start narrowing down my diagnosis, you know, if this patient needs to be admitted, not admitted, going mm-hmm. home, once I once I have a solid plan starting to build then I go over and I speak to any doctor in the emergency room, give mm-hmm. them a quick rundown of what I have, which is probably the hardest part of the job is give like reporting to the doctor what you have. Giving yeah. a quick, concise. You, and it's different. Right, yeah, right. that should be noted, too. It's a lot different than talking to anybody else in healthcare because they know what they want. And you kind of have to know individually them like exactly. this doctor wants it this Their way personality and yeah. just hit them, hit them with it for it yeah. to be effective. Because when you decide year old male past medical history yeah. of this, 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 they're here for this. These are their vitals. This is what I found on exam. These are the results is what I think is going on. Are you cool mm. with that? They either say yes, have at it. They yeah. say uh, I don't know, or they say, "Yeah, go ahead and add this to that," and then you know. It's funny that you brought up the parallels between that type of supervision and the paramed paramedicine side too, because when we have a patient that's a more serious patient, or you know, there's certain things that we can do without calling for medical control, you know. But right. but once we hit that limit of what we can do before, and we have to we have to call our base hospital, right? Talk to an MICN who's a nurse there who sometimes has to go and speak to the emergency room physician. Yeah. Sometimes the doctor jumps have. on. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, or if we have you know a patient that's having chest pain that it's not coming up STEMI, but we we suspect it's STEMI, right. we'll send it to the doctor. The doctor review the EKG, and yep. then they kind of give us medical direction over the phone. Kind kind of the same deal. And most of the time, we know what's going on. Also, we 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 know that you know I know that I know I'm looking at a STEMI. I know this guy's got chest pain. I know what I got to give him. I know what I, what I got to do. Mm-hmm. But some things I can't do without supervision and so i have to call and get permission while i'm already starting to to do the things that i know need to be done you know what i mean totally um uh so so you're essentially i mean you're essentially a doctor in the er for the most part i mean Mm. you're 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 almost doing the same thing as far as like seeing patients uh for the most part diagnosing ordering tests you know uh, writing prescriptions, all that yeah. stuff. As and I was say, with your charting, are you charting under your name and everything, or yeah, you know, you chart under Pre- the doctor? prescription? I'm signing oh, okay. my name. Oh, charting, nice. I'm signing my name. Uh, At what? They they co-sign them. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, are you running down uh, every patient with a doctor? Is it is it required that you every patient um, you go and speak to somebody no. about so it? No. So if I were if I'm working the COVID tent and I see something super simple. Um, then I don't have to run it by anyone. It's, mm-hmm. you know, 
No. You can treat in DC yeah. people. Yeah. Or discharge people. I mean, yeah. Or in fast track, you know, uh-huh. uh, which is where a lot of emergency rooms use their physician assistants is in fast right. track. Right. Right. The lacerations, the broken bones, mm-hmm. all that, you know. Uh, can we explain what fast track is too? It's a, yeah. Sure. It's a part of the hospital that moves a little faster or at least that's the intention Mm -hmm. is quick laceration fixes, quick visits. Uh, I have an earache, got a real quick prescription for people that won't need to stay. People that won't need to stay. And that's all kind of decided by the triage nurse, right? So when you first come to the ER and you're checked in, you see a nurse right off the bat who's going to take your vital signs and stuff like that and get a feeling for what your problem is. Right. Decide who is the most jacked up. Right. That triage nurse will basically put places everyone where in level of importance, you know, severity and where in the hospital where in the er they think that this patient would be best served right right okay Mm -hmm. so when you decide somebody needs to be admitted you Mm -hmm. tell the attending or you guys have to give it to the to a hospital list or yeah so um we put in a bed request Uh as an order like if you're putting in for anything else and then um you put a call out to depending on the patient's insurance Mm -hmm. whether you know what kind of insurance how good how yeah, bad. to make sure that they can be accepted to your hospital, right? And then you have to find a like a team or another doctor yeah. to be their their inpatient doctor, right? So then I put a call to them once they call me back, and I yeah. have given them the report of the patient. Um, then they accept it, and I they the nurses take it from there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, it's like I also have to speak to registration yeah. sometimes, you know, and ask, is it OK that they stay? Is it OK that they no? And then yeah. they tell me they have to be transferred and I have to say, OK, he's he can go BLS or he needs yeah, to go it's handed ALS. Off. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it really sucks that that even has to be a consideration. <laughs> you know what I mean? That like because I do That's it. That's why I have a job. dude. Well, because well, because <laughs> I do it, too. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll look at somebody and, you know, where it's. You know, I, I might not start an IV on this person if they don't 100 percent need it, because that's going to turn this transport into an ALS transport. And it's like, yeah. I know this guy doesn't have insurance. That's why he didn't want to come. But yeah, he really needs to come. It's all so all things that you have to take into consideration as a paramedic and then on a whole nother level. And that's PA. why emergency mm-hmm. medicine is so much is like a, a almost like primary care, too. You yeah, know? Oh, for if sure. People don't have insurance. They use the emergency room like they would, yeah. like they should be using a primary care provider. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's why, you know, things like like uh, universal health care and stuff like that are so important. It's, it's a hot button. Yeah, it can make such a difference. Yeah, it can make such a, a huge, huge difference compared to the system that we have right now. Um, uh, you're not going to work in the ER forever. I'm uh, not. Right. <laughs> um, what other avenues are there that I mean, we talked about PAs like going into other specialties. Yeah. So I've I mean, I have friends, colleagues who I have ones who are in uh, doing surgery. I have some in like cardiothoracic surgery. We've got people doing aesthetic medicine. So Botox fillers. Yeah. We've got someone running a running a covid drive through testing site. Wow. We've got someone in family care, women's health. Yeah, everything. And that's, see, that's common. why that's why PA over MD. Yeah, because you, know? you can also work so much because I can right? I can pick up and go do anything else right. you know, in medicine that I want, as yeah. opposed to a doctor who did a residency in pediatrics. So now you have to do pediatrics. Have a specialty. For the rest of your life. Yeah, it should Become be mentioned. Fellow, yeah. It should be mentioned too. There's also travel traveler PA positions too, right? Mm, Not know. really. I don't know. Not so much. I don't think it's as. Not the I don't same think as it's nurses. like nursing. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know either. But but it's just one of the, the 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 it's one of those things one of those professions that's just flexible all around. You can pick up do whatever, um, and so it's, uh, you know being at the very beginning of it with you is pretty pretty exciting, man. This was informative, and we didn't even get into any juicy marriage shit. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you know what we'll I'm have saying? A juicy marriage this could have been this could have been the newlyweds game. Yeah. And instead, we got an informative <laughs> yeah. talk for anybody who is thinking about becoming a physician's assistant or didn't even know what it was. Are there any um, any organizations or anything that you think might help someone or any websites or anything that somebody who's thinking they might want some more information about Keck or PA yeah, School as a whole? Yeah, just go to the PA program's website. Yeah. They usually break it down pretty well there. They have the, they'll yeah. have the resources yeah. there too. There's also a California Association of Physician Assistant and there's a... a yeah, you look up Keck School of Medicine, and they have pages for all their programs. We're very proud of our program. We got a lot of cool things going on for LA County. Yeah. Right on. 
All right. Um, what else? Bernie, do you have anything <laughs> that you want to plug? No, no plugs. No plugs? No plugs. No plugs. I ain't no she ain't looking for no followers. Oh, what's your <laughs> IG? Like, I'm a married woman. IG? Give me your IG. <laughs> um, at Bernie Gonzo. On Instagram. On Instagram. Ben, where can they find you? You can find me at Ben9Humor. Ben number nine humor, like benign tumor, on Instagram <laughs> and Twitter. And you can find me at Danny Gonzo 34 on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow the podcast at PRC Pod. PRC Pod. Instagram and Twitter. We're going to start can... a TikTok, too. I'm, st- I'm still trying to figure it out. The boys wanted to start one, so I started it, but... Yeah, we, we got to get some dances together to do. And let, a, let us know what TikTok. you want to see on this uh, PRC TikTok <laughs> page. Do you want us to explain crazy old incidents or something? You know, there's all a, the kids are doing of, it, Ben. There's all a the lot of a lot it. of avenues. You know what I'm saying? Danny is itching to dance. <laughs> He's itching to dance. So maybe that'll happen. I don't know, but that'll that'll drop later. It's I probably gonna be PRC pod you. also. <sighs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of a lot of a lot of things that can go down here. Email um, us. Yep. Contact PRC Pod at Gmail. Uh, we have the PRC t shirts and stickers, the Hot Merchant Rescue Pack, 20 bucks, or send us a copy of your five star review, and we'll get those out to you guys. Right, As always. That. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The opinions yeah, yeah. on this show are ours and ours, oh, ours only, and they do not reflect that of the LAFD, the LA County Department of Health Services, or an unnamed trauma hospital. Squeezed it in. Mm hmm. All right. Thank you, Bernie. That was great. You're great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See ya. (laughs) Yeah. Hey. Hey. All right. Hey. Yeah, I mean. Hey. Uh, Please do remain calm. About to run against it and with a little bit of soul, no times.